back to my channel 5 Minute Economics where I teach economic concepts in a span of just 5 minutes. The topic for today is National Income Aggregates. National Income is such a topic whose questions are asked right from school days to your college level or any competitive exam and trust me very recently in an interview I was asked questions on National Income so this is a very important topic and students often tend to get confused with the concepts of GDP, GNP, NNP, NDP, the differences between them. So today I'm here to help you out to simplify such topics, such terms. So yeah, let's get started and don't forget to like this video and please subscribe to my channel so that you don't miss on my future videos and do follow me on Instagram under the handle 5 Minute Economics. So firstly guys, coming to the introduction of national income, before I move to the aggregates, let me first explain to you the features of national income. So basically, it is one of the most significant macroeconomic variables. Mind you, it comes under macroeconomic variables and not microeconomic variables. So number one is that secondary, it tells us the monetary value of all final goods and services. Okay, and thirdly, it is calculated on annual basis. Annual basis basically means that from 1st April to 31st March next year, that annually it is calculated. Next, it is a flow concept. Flow concept is something which is me uh, measured over a period of time and not at a particular point of time like a stock concept. It is a flow concept. Next, it considers only final goods. Okay, so basically uh, only final goods and not intermediate goods. Giving you an example of maybe, you know, when we bake a bread, we use flour to bake a bread, right? So while calculating the national income, we will take the value of the bread and not the flour. Why? Because if we calculate flour and bread, don't we account for double, uh, double counting? So only value of final goods, okay? Next, coming to only first-handed transactions. Basically, if I buy a new car and maybe I sell it in future, okay, I have a new BMW and I sell it, and then I want to maybe purchase a new car. So the person whom I sell the car to, we will not include that in the national income only because we have included it when I bought it at first-hand purchase. So only first-hand purchases, no second-hand purchases. And lastly, there are three methods of calculation of national income. One is the value added method. Next is the income method. And lastly, is the expenditure method. So I hope you're clear with the features of national income. Now we'll be going ahead with the aggregates. So firstly, coming to the most famous concepts, which are GDP and GNP. So what is GDP? GDP stands for gross domestic product. Basically, it is a significant measure of a country's total output of goods and services produced within the domestic territory of a country over a period of time. Mind you, while you're writing the definition or writing anywhere about GDP, you have to remember it is produced within the domestic territory of a country and hence it is called GDP. Okay, and now coming to gross national product. So now gross national product is the value of final goods and services produced by the normal residents. Who are normal residents? Those are residents whose interest lies in the country. Uh, as well as outside the country during a particular period of time. Remember, both of them are flow concepts, so we will have over a particular period of time. So now, can you tell me the difference between GDP and GNP? GDP is that which is produced domestically, whereas GNP is produced by the normal residents from the country as well as those abroad. For example, you know, I work under Deloitte US. So my income is coming from US, right? But I, if, but I am spending here in India. So it will be included in the national income of India, right? And thus it is called GNP. So basically, how do we get GNP from GDP? When we add NFIA, which is net factor income from abroad, basically that income which we paid and that which could be received. That's why it's net factor income from abroad. We get GNP. So remember this formula, it will be very useful and it will be coming again and again. So DP plus NFIA will always give you NP. So now guys, moving to the second concept where we'll be talking about GNP MP and GNP FC. Okay, so here you don't have to focus on GNP, but focus on MP and FC, which have been written as subscript over here. So what is the difference between MP and FC? So MP may market value of all final goods and services produced. Basically the value at which the product comes in the market, whereas FC, which is factor cost, is the total value of goods and services produced by FOP. Who is FOP? Factors of production like land, labor, capital and entrepreneur in the form of wages, rent, interest and profit. Okay, so basically to reach to MP from FC, this is our formula. FC 
plus NIT, which is net indirect taxes, we get MP. You have to remember this formula always. FC plus NIT gives us MP. And it can be the other way around also. NIT is equal to MP minus FC. So that is just mathematical uh, here and there movement. What is NIT? NIT basically is net indirect taxes. We have removed the subsidies from taxes. Always taxes are more. So, you know, IT minus subsidies will give us NIT. So here guys, what is the difference? So you know, when we produced a good, for example, a bottle of water. So that bottle of water is produced at the cost of 50 rupees, okay? Maybe, you know, the cost of plastic and the cost, you know, paid to the people who produce it, it is at 50 rupees. But when that bottle comes in the market, it comes at a cost of 70, right? What is that? That is the market price. And the 20 rupees is our NIT or net indirect taxes. So basically 50 plus 20 will give us 70. So I hope you're clear with the difference between FC and M. Okay, now coming to a new concept we've already done about NFIA and about NIT. Now, I already told you what is GDP in the very first part. Market value of all final goods and services produced within the territorial borders because domestic of a country over a period of time. Now, we will come to a new concept which is NDPNP, which is the market value because it's MP. Final goods and services produced within the territorial borders because it's DP in a year's time after deducting depreciation so this is something new which has been added and whenever we talk about net it always accounts when we have you know removed depreciation from it so this is one new thing which you have to remember which is gross or gdp mp minus depreciation is ndp mp so basically Gross minus net will give us debt, which is depreciation. What is depreciation? Depreciation is basically also known as capital consumption or it's also known as wear and tear. Whenever we have a machinery, obviously we need to know that, you know, it won't function like that always. Initially, it will work at a very good pace, but over a period of time because of wear and tear, it'll, con you know, how it's called capital consumption. Literally, the capital is consumed. And that is why when we are accounting for national income, we always have to remove our depreciation so gross minus net will give us debt which is depreciation and that's the difference between g and n so lastly guys i'll be just giving you a recap and making you solve some numericals which are often asked in examinations so make sure you are crystal clear with this particular concept so these three things you remember and with the help of these three equations only you'll be able to you know solve all the numericals so gross minus net will give us debt NP minus DP, that is national product minus domestic products, give us NFIA. And MP, that is market price minus factor cost, will give us NIT. So if you remember these three, you are sorted. You can always, you know, shift it right, left and just get the answer. So what does national income stand for? You should be knowing that for sure. NNPFC means national income. So NNPFC denotes our national income. Okay, so the year of few sums have already written the answers, but try not to see the answers and guess it for yourself. So NNP MP minus NFIA. NP minus NFIA will give us NDP MP because it's national product minus NFIA will give us domestic product. Next, GNP FC plus NIT. Adding net direct access to FC will give us GNP MP. NNP FC minus NDP FC. So obviously there's a difference of NP and difference of DP. So obviously what will give us? It will give us NFIA, that is net factor income from abroad. Next, now it's uh, I've added two terms, so made it a little more difficult for you. GNPFC minus D. D means depreciation. So now we'll come to NNPFC. NNPFC minus NFIA will obviously now NFIA here is here, so it will come to NDPFC. And lastly, NDPFC plus D. D means depreciation. So now we'll get GDPFC. Solve one, then solve the other, so that way you won't get confused. So now we've added depreciation, it means we've reached to gross. And now adding NIT, so factor cost plus NIT will give us market cost. So obviously GDP, MP. So I hope you're clear with these numericals and I hope this video was useful for you. Thank you so much guys for watching my video and I'll see you in the next video pretty soon.